Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. And welcome to this edition of The Prashad Report. Now joining us from Lebanon is Vijay Prashad. He's the Edward Said Chair at the American University of Beirut. And his most recent book is The Poorer Nations, A Possible History of the Global South. Vijay, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. So Vijay, you recently wrote an article in the Hindu titled Al-Qaeda's Corridor Through Syria. You say that it is no longer the Free Syrian Army, but the radical Islamic State of Iraq and El Shems that is a serious threat to the Assad government. What do you mean by that exactly? Well, you know, uh, firstly, I should say that the situation in Syria is deplorable. You know, there are 22 million Syrians about uh, between six and seven million Syrians have been displaced. Uh, two and a half million Syrians currently have uh, no access to any relief or assistance. So the situation in Syria is just terrible and the war has not abated. But in northern Syria, a belt that runs from the Iraq border all the way out, if the, bend, uh, if the, if the belt bends downwards to Tripoli in Lebanon, there has been a real shift in the situation, the political and military situation. In earlier parts of the uh, revolt, uh, the you know it was different kinds of groups that had emerged there uh, to fight against the regime. There had been popular resistance groups and eventually the Free Syrian Army. Over the course of the last several months, a new development has uh, has broken through much further uh, highly radicalized Islamic groups have emerged in, in dominance in cities like Raqqa, at the Turkish and Syrian border in Azaz, and in, even in, including in Kurdish regions. And these groups have been, um, you know, they mushroomed. There are a series of groups with different names, different emirs, different allegiances. But uh, recently, one particular group which uh, seems to have its origin in Iraq, uh, the uh, ISIS has come to dominate uh, the North and has absorbed many of the smaller, uh, you know, uh, radical Islamist factions. And this group, the ISIS, uh, is very closely linked to Al-Qaeda. Uh, it has, uh, you know, an, an allegiance to Al-Qaeda ideology. They have begun a campaign about two months ago, called expelling the filth. And by expelling the filth, they don't directly mean the regime of Bashar al-Assad. They mean groups like the Free Syrian Army and other rebel groups that uh, you know uh, are not 100% with their own uh, Al-Qaeda type ideology. And they have been able to dominate very large chunks of northern Syria. Uh, this is a troublesome, uh, you know, uh, feature for many reasons. One, they are utterly uncompromising and they are not willing to talk about ceasefires or to talk about coming to Geneva in late November to discuss some kind of, uh, um, you know, modality to close down this civil war, which, as I said, has had a devastating impact on the Syrian people. So they are utterly un uncompromising. They have no political interlocutors who are willing to go to Geneva. And furthermore, they have directly said that anybody who goes to Geneva and uh, represents the rebellion is going to be considered a traitor, which means that they are going to then uh, come after them. So this is a very dangerous situation for Syria right now, where, as I said, the, the conflict persists, the uh, suffering is very great, and as the increase of this Al-Qaeda type group uh, comes in the north, it seems unlikely that any kind of political process can open up. Okay, and can you just give us a bit of an update on where things are at in Syria concerning the, the chemical weapons? Well, uh, yes, the uh, UN organization tasked with uh, inspection of the chemical arsenal of the Syrian regime has just declared that they have completed their paperwork. In other words, the first phase of, of the uh, operation is finished. Uh, they've been around, they've looked at the various sites, etc. You know, this is a very long drawn out process. There first has to be some kind of, uh, you know, accounting. Uh, they have to go in there, inspect the various sites, 
they will then tag them number them you know inspect them again and such like this is going to take several months so the process is not over but they are certainly keeping to their timetable it looks like the issue of chemical weapons is no longer the main issue for syria the main issue right now is to somehow come to a political process where the ceasefire can uh, come into effect and all parties can discuss a way out of the war unfortunately as i said the uh, dominant force in the opposition uh, does not at all want to have a ceasefire and thus far the regime as well has not demonstrated a stomach uh, to come to the table in good faith and uh, close down operations you know the momentum just now on the battlefield is with the government of mr asad and this is of course the time when he should uh, you know try to uh, come to the the table and say let's stop this war if indeed you know he is interested in a peaceful outcome but because the momentum is with him i'm afraid it may not be likely that even the government will come in good faith to the table so the situation for syria is very bad the government may not come in good faith and the current dominant force in the opposition has said that any political dialogue is tantamount to treason against the rebellion so we are in a very bad situation uh, right now in syria okay vj we'll certainly keep tracking things happening over there in syria thank you so much for joining us thank you And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.